Yo, yo, it's your boy Speed here with the top 5 lanes of the recent tug of war tournament. Now the reason why I want to talk about these lanes is because I think they were very potent and would allow you to win your laning stage within the pub and that's very, very crucial when you're trying to win in Dota 2. But yeah, that, that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm just going to be talking about 5 lanes that are particularly strong and allow their teams to get to victory within the recent major and if you know anything about Dota, they will often draft for their laning stage because when you get off to a good start, the game of Dota becomes much easier. And so yeah, if you're excited for this video and just like my content in general, if you could like the video because you like my content, I would like you a lot more. Also, if you're interested in playing a hero like Batrider, who is very difficult and, and confusing if you don't play him correctly, also his meta has changed, right? He now takes Flame Break at level 2. Go check out the Game Leap website in the link down below. I just made a video, a pro replay analysis, by RMN, right? Well, it's by me about RMN, but uh, he's a great offlane player. He had like a 70% win rate at the time of me recording the video, and I did a replay analysis on him to just kind of show why he's so dominant right now. So check that out. Click the link down below, and uh, you know, I hope I'll see you there, guys. All right, getting into the first lane I want to talk about. This one is very weird and hard to execute, and it's why I want to start with it, because I want to talk about it for a little bit of time. Now, this lane was Timbersaw, Rubik, and AA. Now, this is a very bizarre lane, and it's like, why wouldn't they just put the AA with the Jug? So that they could pair their spells together and kill the enemy offlaner. Well, what we should note here is that the enemy team had a Darkseer, and as a result, Darkseer would be cutting the wave, and Rubik and AA don't want to chase a Darkseer around, so instead, they decide to try lane. Now, the purpose of this try lane, and really what I want you to understand about it, is when you have two ranged heroes with a melee tank, it is very easy for those ranged heroes to poke and prod. They can kind of maneuver around the timber saw, deal a lot of damage to the IO, and really hardcore harass this lifestealer. Now, that's not exactly how this lane played out. Zai actually died, I believe, first blood here. But what you should note is because they secured Zai's lane and didn't abandon him to the off lane, what he was able to do is get his early buckler, which is fantastic in this laning stage. And if you're ever try laning, I highly recommend someone investing into a buckler if possible. So he got that. He got a lot of the early CS. And then naturally, because they secured him his favorable matchup, which is Timbersaw against Lifestealer and Io, he counters both of those heroes within the laning stage when played properly, he was able to dominate the game, and that is the purpose of this lane. You want to try lane your offlaner when you know they can carry the game for you, especially if your safe laner is self-sustaining. And this is kind of a lot to take in, this is a bit of a complex idea, but that's why I want to start the video with. I get it. I'm going to lay it out one more time. If your safe laner can self-sustain his lane, and your offlaner will solo carry the game or, or have a ton of impact in the game, it is very good to try lane him for the beginning, especially only the beginning. So what they did was they got Zai off to a good start on the timber saw, and then Puppy made a lot of stacks, Yapser made some stacks, and they were big chillin'. And yeah, because of this try lane, Matumba Man on the Juggernaut was able to get free farm in the safe lane because they applied so much pressure to the safe lane that attention, even Kuroki on the next assassin, had to go to that lane and help out. So they naturally forced a try lane giving the Juggernaut a 1v1 matchup against the Darkseer, which is, it's basically even, they just trade farm. And on top of that, Zai got off to a good start. It's exactly what Team Secret wanted, and it's the purpose of try lanes. You secure certain lanes by forcing pressure into certain areas. Next up, I want to talk about a very strong lane. This is one that hits close to home for me, because when I used to play in NADCO, which was PPD's just in-house league for NA, I was on a team, and we would basically, if we could, first phase Sven and Leshrac, and <laughs> yes, Sven position forward. This was when Sven just gave like the straight up shield where when he casted Warcry, everyone just got like flat HP and movement speed. It was really, really, really strong. And what we did was we just paired a off lane Leshrac. Now this can be safe lane Leshrac as well. And in this game where B8 played against Gambit, B8, Dendi's team, paired a safe lane Leshrac with a Nyx Assassin. And why is this lane very, very strong? Well, these heroes complement each other absolutely perfectly. Nyx Assassin naturally is a frontline tank that can have some issues setting up stuns, but that's not the end of the world in this lane. All you need to do as a Nyx Assassin when paired with the Leshrac is occasionally look for a stun once you get your Spike Carapace to set it up. You stun, you let the Leshrac follow up, he turns on Edict, and it's basically a secured kill. And if you even look at this match, they get a very early kill onto the Pango by doing exactly this. The Nyx Assassin with his very tanky natural kit was able to bait out the Pango, Forces Swashbuckle, and they secured the kill due to that. On top of that, Nyx Assassin is just a great shield for Leshrac. Leshrac is one of the squishiest level 1 heroes in Dota. Its base damage is absolutely abysmal. It is almost unplayable to last hit with Leshrac, so it is really crucial, crucial that Nyx Assassin just provides a shield for Leshrac at level 1 
level two. You are just a shield for Leshra. You basically just make sure he doesn't die and then you'll win the lane later on. On top of that, going into the mid game, the reason why I like this combo so, so much is heroes like Sven and Leshrac or Nyx and Leshrac, whatever you're paired with, can hunt extremely well. On top of that, if we think about it, Leshrac really, really wants to push towers at some point in the game, especially if he's maxing out his Diabolic Edict. That is the goal of the Leshrac at this point in the game. And when you are doing this, you are very susceptible to ganks, extremely susceptible to ganks because you are simply sitting under a tower under vision and anyone can TP in and try to kill you considering you have no natural mobility besides your high movement speed. And what Nyx Assassin does is he provides the best scouting in the game. Vendetta allows him to scout out and if anyone shows alone, you easily kill them no problem. Leshrac Nyx has enough damage to kill any hero basically all the way up to the 20 minute mark. It is so powerful in that regard. So you kind of just play as this nice little duo. You can create an insane amount of space. You can gank in the jungle. You can take towers very versatile in the lane and in the mid game. Next up, we have another game between Teen Secret and Nygma. And I know I'm going to be using them as an example a lot throughout this video, but why wouldn't I really? It would be foolish for me not to. These are two of the best teams in the world right now. Obviously, Nygma has been struggling a little bit, but they literally just beat Secret. So clearly, they're pretty good. And in this game, what Nygma did was they ran a Lifestealer Slaughter lane. Now, Slaughter is hands down. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, this might be bold, but he might be the best laner in Dota, almost no matter what the lane is, right? He loses almost no matchups. And because of this, you want to pair him with other heroes that can be aggressive. And Lifestealer, and I'm going to give you another option just so you can kind of experiment and, and run this when you don't have the exact heroes. Let's say it's Slaughter Troll. That works just as well, if not better. Heroes like Troll are better than Lifestealer early on, so the amount of pressure you can apply is insane. Just think about it. If a Slaughter walks up to you and stuns you, you get stunned, then slowed, and you get punched in the face, and then Troll slows you again, it is almost impossible to lean. On top of that, Slaughter and Troll are some of the most tanky heroes in Dota. They are so tanky, and especially when Troll gets a smith chance, what do you do? And it's really the same thing with Lifestealer. If you try to man up to Slaughter or Lifestealer, and they cast open wounds, you're just going to get bashed, wounds, life stealed off of, and it's going to be very difficult to trade, and that's what we saw here. If you watch this game, Zai was level 3 on the Darkseer when Miracle was level 7, and sure he was solo laning, but the amount of pressure they were able to keep up was outstanding, and that's really what I want to push you to do, and this is my next public service announcement. Guys, if you're playing a hero like Slaughter, or playing a hero like, let's say, Skyrath Mage in lane, look to apply aggression. I see a lot of players, they are afraid to experiment with aggression, because when you get too aggressive, you sort of die, uh, people flame you, it's like, it gets all over the place, but you have to test, test, test. If you're trying to get better at Dota, you can't just sit behind the creep wave, literally just sit behind the creep wave, that's all people do, it makes me so mad. Do something, go pull, or at least go try to kill them, and if you're playing this lane, and you do not apply aggression, level 1, level 2, especially when Slaughter gets bashed and is stunned, you will not be able to get the maximum value. You won't. And that's the important thing to note about these laning stage videos. You can't just pick the lane and expect, oh, I picked the lane. GG. Why didn't I win? Clearly, Speed has no clue what he's talking about. No, it's because you're not doing what the lane is strong at. So really, think about what your hero is good at. Think about their spikes and implement them. And in this Slaughter Lifestealer lane, it can be level 1 or, most importantly, level 2. A lot of heroes don't spike at level 2, Slaughter has a massive spike at level 2. Abuse it. Next up on the list is ET Enchantress plus Void. Now, you're not going to put all these heroes in the same lane, and I'll explain what I mean. But basically what I'm saying is you want to pair Enchantress and Void, or ET and Void. And in this matchup between VP and Nygma, what we saw is that Nygma went for the ET plus Void lane. Now, I think... Enchantress plus Void is a little bit stronger. It depends on the matchups, right? Because Enchantress can be better against specific heroes who maybe are weak to units, while ET is much better against heroes who can't defend themselves when getting right click. There's specific heroes that counter out ET and Enchantress. That would obviously have to be another entire video. <laughs> but basically, all I'm saying is I generally like Enchantress with Void a little bit more because I think if you pair something like the Centaur Stomp or the, the Clap Creep, whatever it's called, the Tornado that goes like... And then... uh smacks him as well as gives attack speed to void like that lane is crazy and yeah it's kind of that simple i would love to make it more complex than this but it's very similar very very similar and that is the goal of these lanes when you're playing et void or enchantress void you have to understand the key fundamental that your heroes naturally trade well purely based on their stats and their level one and level two abilities and how good of value points they are enchant is one of the best abilities in the game I recently tweeted that like I was watching Burge play ability draft 
and no one in the entire lobby picked it until like the last round or not at all. I actually don't remember, but they didn't pick it. How do you not pick enchant? That ability is broken at level one. It's a four second slow, 3.75 seconds slow, and it takes a big creep, a big creep that gives bonus damage. You just need one point and it's broken. <laughs> And when you pair that with Void, a hero that naturally has good armor, some of the best space damage in the game, a great animation, you just crush them. You literally just walk up and hit them. You take a creep, you walk up, and you hit them. If you can't do that, I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just do you just take a creep and hit them. Or you can even just literally level enchant, throw an impetus, and hope for a bash, and it's probably a favorable trade. That's it. There's no way you messed that up. There's actually no way you messed that up unless you're just not trying. Please, stop. And finally, to top off the video, we had a heartbreaking game. Actually, I mean, I guess Nigma came back from it and they ended up reverse sweeping Secret, which was, oof, that was really a great tournament. It really, really was. That was like a, a really cool tournament. I, I actually had so much fun watching it. I watched like almost every single game, at least the highlights of every single game. And what we saw here was a Sven IO lane from Nigma. Now they ended up losing this lane. Uh, you know, I guess that's a disclaimer. But what I will say is that this lane put in work. The most impressive thing about this lane to me was the fact that they were going against a Rubik Necrophos and they actually ended up falling first blood to them. So if you watch that game, Zai made this incredible bait play with like a bunch of fairy fires and, and death pulls to bait in Miracle and they ended up killing Miracle, I believe first blood and GH right afterwards. And it's like, oh, okay, that happened. How is this a good lane then? Well, first things first, Necrophos and Rubik is one of the hardest lanes in Dota to deal with if they play it properly, at, at least conceptually in my head. The reason is, is that they are going to shove the wave into you unbelievably hard. Probably harder than any other lane in Dota. Because let's think about it. When you're shoving in the lane with Rubik, you fade both the creeps, right? It's going to hit all the heroes, all the creeps, as long as you, you know, get decent circumstances for that. It weakens all the damage of all the creeps and the heroes. So the wave right then and there will probably shove into them. And when you, you pair that with Death Pulse, which not only does damage to all the heroes, but also all the creeps and heals your creeps, there's no way your creep wave dies first. And that is going to make the trades naturally more favorable. I'm not going to say that that dictates all the trades. In fact, I believe GH and Miracle tried to bypass this idea of playing around creeps by simply all inning on them. And that's exactly what they did because they understand that they don't want to play this chip game against a, a Necrophos Rubik. They all in and it almost worked because of Zai's item build I genuinely believe he was able to live and because of his good movement as well as good spell casting he was able to live but they really 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 apply the aggression and this lane is super super strong the IO actually I mean honestly I guess you could even say that the Rubik Necrophos lane could just be a lane in this video now that I've described it but at the same time Miracle and GH on the IO Sven put in work they came back and they ended up doing really really well to shut down Zai and the reason is all you have to do to execute this lane, I guess I should stop saying it's really simple. It is one of the hardest parts about Dota to synergize your spells, but the reason why I'm trying to stress this, guys, is being able to synergize your spells is a huge indicator, a huge indicator of whether or not you are going to win your lane and whether or not you're going to gain MMR. Because when I look at an immortal snack and they go against the divines, one of the best ways I can tell that they're going to crush them is whether or not the divines are able to synergize in lane, and often they are not. It literally goes that far. They get a little bit better, and there are times that they do it, but not nearly as much. You have to keep trying to synergize, synergize, synergize. And in this Sven Isle lane, your synergy is you stun, you turn on overcharge, and you run them down. You have great movement speed from the Warcry of the Sven, as well as the tether buff, and you literally just run them down with the tether slow, add it onto that with a stun and the attack speed from overcharge. It is almost impossible for any hero to deal with it because Io eats a Tango, he heals up the Sven, Sven runs in, takes the damage, and you all in on someone and it is simple to execute as long as you can synergize and communicate to your teammate that you want to run at one specific target if anyone even slightly overextends let's say it's a lion who is a useless hero i'm kidding he's not that useless but let's say a lion is out of position you run him down and he will easily without being able to cast any spells lose half of his hp just to one sven stun and one use of overcharge giving 50 attack speed to both the sven in the IO. And that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and maybe we'll try out some of these lanes. If there's any lane in particular that you think I didn't talk about that's either in this tournament or in general that you think is good in Dota, I'd be happy to hear what you have to say in the comment section down below. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft 
and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys. 25% and start your journey today.